Ballarat Health Services, putting your health first. Concussion or mild traumatic brain injury, treatment and management. What is this DVD about? There are two parts to this DVD. The first part deals with what happens when you come into the accident and emergency department. We'd like to think that you're going to get better and we're not trying to scare you in any way. The second part deals with, if needed, the acquired brain injury services. This DVD is just to give you some prompts to remind you how to look after yourself. Mild traumatic brain injury may also be referred to as concussion or mild head injury. What is a mild head injury? A mild head injury is typically someone who is knocked out only briefly or is hit in the head and is actually not knocked out. And the symptoms they have afterwards are typically memory loss, headache, nausea, confusion. They might get some dizziness and feel uh, uh, generally unwell. Do most people recover? Most people who have a mild traumatic brain injury have a completely full recovery. That's usually a quick full recovery and sometimes it's a bit slower. What happens first at the emergency department? You'll be seen by a senior experienced nurse at triage who will do a very brief assessment. They will determine where you best need to be seen. Depending on the mechanism of injury that you've had, and the symptoms that you're feeling, you may be taken to one of a number of areas. You may be seen in the fast track, in the bays, or even in the resuscitation area. In addition to assessing you for your head injury, we may even apply a collar to your neck in order to protect you from any suspected neck injury. Who does the assessment for a brain injury? The assessment process involves a number of people whether that's the ambulance crew before the emergency department, the triage nurse at the front desk, the nurse that will be looking after you in the bay that you're in, the doctor that sees you, and that will be in conjunction with a senior doctor, either at the bedside or within the department in a separate area. We check you over for any bruises, skin marks, um, and then we do uh, a more in-depth neuro examination. Will they do other tests on me? The decision to perform scans, blood tests or any other investigations will be individualised and many factors play into that decision, such as the length of time from the injury, the mechanism of the injury and how you've progressed since you've presented to the emergency department and even before. When can I go home? For someone that may not have had a, a loss of consciousness who has got a good recall of events and who is very stable and has someone to look after them, sometimes they can go home after the doctor's seen them. If they've had a period of a loss of consciousness and there's no amount of time on that, it can be five seconds, it can be 20 seconds, then we would say we'd keep you for four hours for head injury observations. Why do they observe me for four hours? Some injuries take a while to present. So someone injures their head, then they walk around and look fine, and then all of a sudden, a few hours later, they start getting a severe headache and vomiting and can become unconscious. Why do I need somebody to take me home? When someone has a mild traumatic brain injury, they might not have the capacity to make a good decision on their own behalf. Uh, uh, whether or not they've got alcohol and drugs on board, those things can be difficult, especially if they've got a brain injury. If the patient's to be discharged, they need to go home in the care of a competent adult. We don't recommend that um, people who have had a, any type of head injury drive home. It is much safer for them to be in the care of someone else. If you or we have any specific concerns regarding driving, alcohol or contact sports, for example, we'll discuss those specifically with you whilst you're in the department. Will I get a referral to a GP or an ABI unit? If you're discharged home, we'll arrange for follow-up for you, either through the Acquired Brain Injury Clinic or through your GP. For general follow-up and ongoing reassurance, it would be good to see your GP for continuity of care. Advice will be given to you at each stage of your discharge and during your recovery, from the emergency department, from the Acquired Brain Injury Clinic if that's required, or via your GP. You may be watching this DVD in a hospital ward. 
if you have had injuries in addition to concussion. In that case, you may be followed up by a therapist in the hospital or referred to the ABI service after your discharge from hospital. How long will it take to recover? When you leave the accident and emergency department, you'll be given this DVD, and this is to reinforce that there are common symptoms that in 96% of people slowly disappear over the next two to three weeks. Very likely, you'll be very tired. You might be a bit more irritable. You might find bright lights a bit of an issue. What should I do to look after myself if you've got a bad headache tomorrow, you should probably be lying down for most of the day and taking it easy. We certainly avoid strenuous exercise. What do carers need to look for? Carers might notice things that are not normal and often they'll actually tell us, hey, he looks fine, but they're not their usual self. They're usually very good judges of something's not right and it's important that they take action then, try and get that person to see a doctor that they convey those uh, messages to the medical staff and nurses that are looking after the patient. And it's those subtle things that will help us uh, raise our vigilance for looking out for something serious. And it's also those things that will prompt the emergency staff to involve our experts at the Acquired Brain Injury Clinic and get a referral to the people who are very well placed at following these people up. When should the carer bring me back in to the emergency department? Should you deteriorate at any time or feel that you need to be seen again, we'd like you to come back to the emergency department for further review. If you are um, having any difficulty convincing your loved one they need to duck back to hospital or go and see their GP or keep their acquired brain injury clinic appointment, uh, get them to watch this video. You are doing the right thing if you're trying to encourage your loved one to come back to the uh, emergency department and that we're here to help. We'll uh, welcome you with open arms when you bring them back here for a checkup. Why do I need to rest during my recovery? With a brain injury, it's not something that you can push through. You actually need to let the body heal itself. It's not like running 100 metres that if you push it a bit harder, you're going to run a bit faster. It doesn't work that way. A head injury, even a mild one, will impair your judgement and reaction time. Anything else that also impairs this will only exacerbate that problem and we advise you to make sensible choices as to your lifestyle after your head injury. The concept is of respecting the injury. That includes not drinking alcohol, not smoking dope, trying to get a good night's rest. Without doing those things, the symptoms will get worse and it will take longer to recover. One of the rare complications but important after a head injury is seizures, climbing ladders, Swimming in a pool on your own and things like that are really not a good idea. When can I drive? If you've got significant symptoms, you should probably not drive for at least a few days. We ask our staff to specifically advise patients when they're leaving and the carer, most importantly, about fitness for driving. When can I go back to work? From a practical point of view, if you need a work certificate, you really should get that certificate at the Accident and Emergency Department. It's really important that people do get follow-up and get the GP or their doctor or the doctor at the Acquired Brain Injury Clinic to help them with their return to work program. Our staff really try and assess what job you're doing and make sure that you're safe when you go back to work and sometimes that might involve modified duties. When can I return to sport? We generally recommend a period of rest with just gentle exercise such as walking. And only when you're completely symptom free will you be ready to commence a stepwise return to sporting activities. Each step should take at least 24 hours before proceeding to the next level. The six steps are relative rest, then light aerobic exercise, sport specific exercise, non-contact training drills, full contact practice, and then a return to play. If any of your symptoms come back at any stage, you should drop back to the previous level and wait at least 24 hours before trying again. What about returning to study? 
I'd have a low threshold for keeping them home for a few days. The worst case scenario for us is advising you know, children around uh, year 11 and 12. They've obviously got really important studies coming up. It's important for the medical staff to you know, write a certificate that allows that person to have some leniency at school. If I'm referred to the ABI service, how can they help me? Experience tells us that people who build up slowly, take a stepwise approach to going back to work or school, do much better. We take a rehabilitation focus and we can access medical services, physical services, counselling and psychological supports as and when needed. How can I reduce the risk of injury? The last child I saw with a serious head injury was saved by the fact that he wore a helmet. The amount of violence that happens outside clubs and in the streets overnight is really a cause of concern and I think people need to realise that it's okay to be, have some social drinking and so on but they need to take responsibility for their action. I think prevention is better than cure whether it's road safety or seat belts, speeding alcohol. This film provides general information about concussion or mild traumatic brain injury. Feel free to share this film with others and this will help them understand what you are going through. Reduce the impact of concussion or mild traumatic brain injury. If you or anyone you know has symptoms, seek immediate medical attention. For any medical emergency, call 000. For further information, contact Ballarat Health Services Acquired Brain Injury Service. 03 5320 3728. This film was made by David Brown Films for Ballarat Health Services with funding from the Department of Health and Human Services Regional ABI Information, Training and Secondary Consultation Project. Victoria State Government. Ballarat Health Services, putting your health first.